We have never had more powerful tools for building our own worlds than we do today. But while that accessibility is great, every new tool comes with its own interfaces and menus and systems and shortcuts to slowly get familiar with. And between Blender and Maya and Substance and Marmoset and Unreal Engine itself, just to name a few, you end up dealing with hundreds of micro interactions throughout that pipeline. And while it may not seem like it at the time, all of these clicks introduce little points of friction that collectively eat up hours of our time. Now, fortunately, William Foucher, who's known for making some of the most useful Unreal Engine plugins available, has just released a brand new one called Easy Toolbag. And it's simply designed to streamline dozens of the repetitive tasks that we all do every time we work in Unreal, maybe without even realizing it. He admits that all of the features in this new plugin are things that you can natively do in Unreal, but he's packaged these common actions in a way that strips away all of the repetitive clicking that slows down your workflow every time you're in the engine. But really what I think is interesting here and why I was excited to talk about this tool is that while saving a few clicks here and there might not sound revolutionary, I think this represents something more important happening in our industry that we need to pay attention to. So for now, let's hop over into Unreal to look at what Easy Toolbag actually does. And then for those who stick around to the end, we'll unpack why these kinds of tools might matter more than you think. So to get started, you can purchase Easy Toolbag in the Fab Marketplace. And once you purchase it, you can come over to Fab inside of Unreal and click Add to Project. In Unreal 5.6 and newer, it will show up by default in your toolbar, which you can click to open and then drag over and dock where you want it. Now, it's important to note here that other versions of Unreal don't show this by default. So if you're using an older version than 5.6, then make sure to check out the launch video over on William's channel, where he has a short tutorial that walks you through how to get this to show up by default in those versions as well. And it's also worth noting here that Easy Toolbag is not technically a plugin, which has upsides and downsides. The downside is you need to add Easy Toolbag to each of your projects one by one. The upside is that it only takes one click to do that, and since it's based on blueprints rather than C++, it won't break every time Unreal updates to a new engine version. And if you're familiar with blueprints at all, you'll be able to customize the tool itself since William gives you the entire UI framework, which I'll touch on at the end. Okay, so once you get Easy Toolbag added to your project and docked where you like, you'll see a panel like this that is split into three different sections called Create, viewport helpers, and easy suite. The first collection of tools here at the top are essentially one-click shortcuts to create some of the most common things that you'll need in each of your scenes with the right settings already dialed in as a starting point. For example, every level that you create in Unreal will need at least one post-process volume, if not many. The problem is every time you bring one in, it requires you to go up to your menus, find the post-process volume or search for it, spawn it in, then move it over to where you want it. Then once you get it where you want it, you have to adjust the baseline settings. For example, setting it to unbound and then turning off things like auto exposure and lens flares. But Easy Toolbag now makes it easy to one-click drop a new volume right into your scene in front of your camera with those most commonly used settings already turned on for you. By clicking sequence and camera, you're able to create a sequence and a camera at the same time. Typically, when you're setting up a shot in Unreal for a render, you'd first need to come up, create a sequence, and then create a camera separately for each one. But now with just one click, you can create both at the same time, which saves a handful of those clicks every time you create a new sequence and camera. Then when you want to add a new camera, you can just click Cine Camera here and it'll place a new camera wherever you are in the world. Normally, there are a few different ways to add cameras. You could come over to Place Actors, go to Cine, drag a camera in, right click it, pilot, then move it over where you want it. Or you could come up to Perspective, go down to Camera, Create Camera, which will create a camera where you are, but then you need to go back and find it in the Outliner and pilot it. But now with Easy Toolbag, you can just click Create Cine Camera here 
and it'll spawn and already have you piloting it, which is kind of cool. Sky system is an interesting one because it basically takes your environment light mixer and it moves it down into your sidebar with just one click. Normally, each time you'd be setting up a new level to get started, you would go up to window, click environment light mixer, and then select everything one by one. But now with each new level, you can just tap sky system and it instantly populates all of those things into your scene and tucks them into a folder. And the last thing that William placed into this first category are lighting reference spheres. These are something you won't use too often unless you specifically work with cinematics or as a lighting artist. But when you do need them and you want to check the lighting in your scene, setting these up by hand, while not being hard, really does feel like a few minutes of time sync that you'll never get back. So having these just one click away and easily being able to adjust their layout and size really does feel like a nice bonus in this panel. And they also happen to be 180 centimeters tall. So if you need a quick human size reference, this is a nice little workaround for that as well. The second category of tools here are called viewport helpers. By default, Unreal displays your scene with an uncapped FPS in your viewport. And this is usually fine, especially when you're just getting started on your scene. But as it gets heavier, your GPU will very quickly start spinning up and running at 100% the entire time. So since we usually don't need our scenes running at 100 FPS while we work, or even really above 30 or maybe 60 FPS, Unreal does give you the ability to adjust this yourself using console commands, which means most people never really use it. But now you can just click to cap the FPS using the button here or to adjust the slider to set a specific frame rate. I usually leave mine around 30 to 60 FPS depending on the scene, which does make a huge difference in performance. Screen percentage is the next one in this category and it works nicely alongside capping your frames. I personally think it's oddly named inside of Unreal, but essentially screen percentage is calculated based on your display's resolution as I understand it, and Unreal usually sets you to a default of around 70 to 85, based on your computer. This default works most of the time, but again, if your scene is starting to struggle to run at a decent FPS, you might want to give it an override. Of course, Unreal does allow you to do this by default, but it's buried behind a handful of clicks, so I never really take the time to reach for this. But now you can tap on this screen percentage override to turn it on, and then you can drag the slider down to reduce the resolution your scene is displayed at. Or if you want to take a higher fidelity screenshot, you can instead slide it up to start oversampling your scene at the cost of FPS. But it is a nice little hack to get a better quality screenshot without playing with console commands or going into movie render queue. AA type takes this a step further by letting you quickly adjust your anti-aliasing type inside of your viewport, which when combined with screen percentage can give you really nice screenshots or at least a nice preview of what your renders out of movie render queue might look like with different AA methods applied or with no anti-aliasing applied at all. Now exposure compensation is a simple one. You can just toggle it on and then slide it left or right to adjust the overall exposure offset of your level. Now to wrap up this section is something called viewport UI type. And it's something that many people will love, but probably most people won't touch at least in the long term. See, when Unreal Engine rolled out version 5.6, they brought with it a UI overhaul for the viewport. It does remind me personally a bit of Blender, so I enjoy it myself, but many Unreal users hated it. So it is kind of convenient that William built in the ability to toolbag to revert the UI back to the old version, or to use both while you still get used to the new one. Which now brings us down to the third section of tools inside of Easy Toolbag, which is the Easy Suite. If you have one of William's other products like Easy Fog or Easy Rain or Easy Atmos or Easy Snow, you now have access to them directly from this third category of the panel with just one click. Normally your workflow would be to go down to your asset browser to find the right blueprint, to drag it in, and then more often than not, having to adjust it back over to where you are in the scene. But now that it's accessible in this panel, you can just click the button, for example, with fog, and it will spawn a fog card directly in front of you where you are in the scene, pre-rotated to where you are. This might not sound like a big deal, but when you're building out a larger scene and you're hopping between different folders and searching for different blueprints, the time saving here really adds up, especially 
I assume, as William continues to build out other easy products. So yeah, that is the easy toolbag panel with its current features. But as William says in his launch video, and as I promised at the beginning, easy toolbag is more than just a collection of buttons and presets. If you go down to the easy toolbag systems folder, you can open up the actual framework that it was built on. And that means that you can edit and customize it to fit your needs. For example, you can start by moving around the buttons inside the layout if you prefer them in a different order. Or if you don't like the presets he has dialed in, you can just go up to graph, go to say the post process volume and adjust its defaults to the ones that you prefer. So that each time you click the shortcut in the panel, it spawns in the way you like it every time. You can even start adding your own features to Toolbag if you're familiar with Blueprint widgets, or if you feel like diving into and watching some tutorials on Unreal's Motion Graphics UI Designer, which is more commonly referred to as UMG. Okay, so that is Easy Toolbag and what it currently does. But the reason I instantly bought this tool is because I think William's approach here represents something bigger that's happening to our industry. See, if you look specifically at his entire easy suite of tools, it's easy to see a pattern in what he's building. He's essentially taking his most common workflow friction points and eliminating them one by one, right? He isn't creating generative tools that create the art for you. Instead, he's removing all of these repetitive setups and the menu diving and the constant clicking that eats up 20 minutes before you actually get to the art and the world building itself that you should really be spending your time on. And while these tools are branded as easy, I actually think that undersells what's happening here because it's not really about making things easier. The way I see it is it's more about collapsing the time between having an idea and having something you can start iterating on. And I think his tools do that really well. For example, every time you place a camera inside of Unreal, you're spending a few moments on technical setup inside of menus, just getting a sequence created and hooking up a camera to it. And that's time that could be spent on composition or testing a new camera angle that would better serve your story. Or how every post-process volume requires you to go up and drag it into your scene and then to follow the same series of settings and clicks to get it to a usable default state before you can even start tweaking the settings that are unique to your actual scene. And of course, when it comes to actual assets like fog cards or rain, you can now spend more time working on the actual mood than creating those from scratch. And this acceleration that these tools are enabling to get you from zero to one much faster, I think that's what actually matters. Because once you have that first version, then you can spend more time on what makes a difference with all of the refinement and the storytelling and the actual art direction decisions that start shaping your work and separating good work from great work. But the reason why I think these tools mirror what is happening in the industry more broadly is that it is really easy to just keep doing things the way we've always done them. We get comfortable with our workflows, even when they're wasting hours of our time because they're familiar. William could have just accepted that placing cameras takes five clicks like most of us do, or that adjusting things in our menus requires diving deep into them each time we need something. But he didn't, and that's the approach that I'm personally taking to stay ahead of a rapidly advancing and demanding industry. 10 years ago, this might not have mattered as much, but today we have to constantly question whether the way we're working is actually the best way with what's available now, or if it's just the familiar way. And if you found this intro to Easy Toolbag helpful, this is exactly what this channel and my newsletter are dedicated to. So if you want to stay ahead of where the future of world building and our industry is headed, then make sure to sign up for the newsletter linked below. And until then, thank you for being here and I'll catch you in the next one.